going to start the coin from now, and then that you do the cup. Okay, clapperboard. I saw a great clapperboard the other day. It's a, a digital one. It's, a, it's an iPad thing. You just click it, does it all for oh, you. Really? It's really good. Anyway, <laughs> old fashioned. Wow, that's uh, well, how how Endeavour began. That's that's quite a question. Well, I go back uh, to the late Inspector Morse's, the original ones that had uh, Barry Feelong, uh, who was a chap and a well-known composer who I worked with for many years across the series of that and Lewis. I entered a competition when I was uh, studying at college, and uh, I was chosen as one of the select few to work with. Well, actually, originally Michael Kamen, but Michael couldn't do it because he was busy working on Robin Hood at the time. And so Barry stepped in and ran the masterclass. So consequently, that led me to work on the last, I think, four, four or five episodes of the original Expect More series with John Thor. Then all of the Lewises that I worked with Barry on, and then the beginning of Endeavour. Unfortunately, as Barry's health declined, um, I had to step into the scoring duties more, um, and Mammoth and ITV were wonderful by trusting me to do that. So consequently, when the unfortunate happened and Barry passed away, I took up the scoring duties for the series and ended up scoring 26 feature-length dramas in all. So it feels like I've known the characters since I first saw them with my mum when I was on the sofa back when I was, when I was 12 or so, uh, back in the late 80s. Much of what we do in this industry is based on relationships with people. And because of my relationship with Mammoth Screen and Endeavour, I had the grateful duty to work with a chap called Russell Lewis. Russell wrote and created Endeavour, and I got very close to Russell over the years. We wrote pop songs together and all sorts of operas and, and all sorts of material for Endeavour. So when Russell was developing a new show for ITV uh, with um, Tall Story and Vaudeville Pictures, uh, I went for dinner with Russ once and I remember him telling me about this idea he had to dramatise Peter James's very successful Roy Grace novels. So I didn't think for a moment that obviously that would lead to anything, but I had a meeting at ITV and it just happened. It was one of those serendipitous events where something came up, you happened to know some people involved and because they'd seen my work on Endeavour and I'd worked with Russ for, for many years, it just seemed a natural fit and now here we are entering series four. So again, there's this lineage that I've gone through with these projects that are very personal to me because they're, they're personal to the people that I work with, which is a great part of the filmmaking process. I, I, I really enjoy those collaborations where you can repeat with both directors, producers, editors, directors, everybody, and you come back and it's, it's almost like forming a new family every time you start a new project like this. So it's, it's an absolute pleasure to be involved with. Tom Jones came about last year because Mammoth were shooting this um, romantic comedy and so they asked me to, to whether I'd be interested in actually scoring it for them and having uh, obviously worked on the many, 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 many murder mysteries, it was now just a wonderful chance to do something far more comedic and light-hearted. So I obviously jumped at the chance. And, and at that period, we were working both on Tom Jones and the last series of Endeavour simultaneously. So we had four episodes of Tom Jones, three episodes or feature-length episodes of Endeavour. So all for Mammoth. So it, was, it was quite a, a crazy period. And uh, But it, it gave me a chance to write in a different style. It, obviously, Endeavour's got a very established sound in the world of Oxford. Um, so when we hit Tom Jones, it was something completely different. And, and that again, these organic connections keep seeming to come up in my career. And I've been very lucky to work with the same people on a number of occasions and uh, form these strong relationships. So when it comes down to the way that I, I work, I, like many composers, I obviously sit at the piano and, and tinkle around till something sort of springs out at me. And then we move it into the world of computers. Um, so usually I don't like to get involved and see early scripts or early cuts. I kind of want to experience what the audience will experience. So the emotions, the, the points of reference that they'll pick up, the red herrings they may or may not pick up. So sometimes being overly informed with the production can sort of preempt which direction you're going to to go down and in my case I like to sit there and and for better or for worse react in a way that an audience member might so sometimes that that works sometimes it's not always spot on and we have to move around with it a little bit then because of the time that we have in order to be able to achieve scoring in these shift to the computers and, and flesh it out much like anybody else would from there in then we hit a review process where the clients come into to my studios here uh, we go through everything in fine detail, and then it goes over to the front office where it, it heads towards orchestration, music prep, and then we go out to the studio and record. So it, in the middle of it, it's, it becomes a bit of a um, bit of a small army of people to be involved, but it does mean we can we can output a great deal of music very quickly at a very high level of quality. Okay. Okay. With the 
<laughs> Netflix. <laughs> One of the joys of being a composer, certainly in this world of television and film uh, and other, other platforms now, is still the best part of the job for me is getting in front of the orchestra, you know, the wonderful musicians that we work with, with the London Metropolitan Orchestra. So getting out there and conducting is something I thoroughly enjoy. It's amazing the, the little things you can remember whilst you're writing that may not have always made it into the score, that yet when you're on the podium with the musicians, bang, you can just communicate to them what you're thinking in a way that's far more intimate and far more personal than perhaps just scoring everything out slavishly so I, I really love that part of a job part of the job of course I, I fully understand some projects my time's better off being in the in the booth and working as a producer more so than perhaps conducting but wherever I can I, I certainly thoroughly enjoy the process um, we have quite a fairly unique setup here in Beethoven Street so we have a series of writing rooms uh, we also have an orchestration and music preparation room with um, high quality printing facilities and orchestration facilities and that enables us to completely deliver the end-to-end -end process so from composition through orchestration we have a mix room next door as well and it's all within the one facility which is great because you get to work with so many talented people here um, we have people from all over the world working with us and uh, the process becomes not just me sitting in a room it then expands out around the building and obviously eventually out to the studios it's just a wonderful sense of family again, which I keep coming back to. And I guess that's the feeling I like to create, that whoever we're working with, it was always a very intense and a close relationship. So when something new comes in, my whole visualisation process for this is very much, as I think I've touched on previously, is all about an emotional response to whatever I'm seeing or working with, whether that be theatre or whether it be television or film. So when it comes to the projects that I am very lucky to work on, music can make a fundamental difference to the way a scene is portrayed by an audience member. You can make something seem happy or sad, you can really deflect or enhance the emotion. But really music's there to do, not just to underpin, it's there to really support the emotion of what's going on. And I've always responded emotionally to whatever stimulus is coming in. So when it comes to a visual aspect, mine is is what's going on with the characters what are they feeling and so that often comes out immediately on on first or second viewing and that's usually the response that is the correct one for the film sometimes you may disagree with people sometimes you take it in a different way but ostensibly it's always about the emotional reaction to something and on that note uh, on that note i see what you did there <laughs>